time for Talking Tauntaun! Your Star Wars source at AIPTcomics.com Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Talking Tauntauns, the official Star Wars podcast for AIPTcomics.com. I am JJ Travers and I'm joined this morning, as always, by Nicole Herview and Jim Lahane. Today we're going to be talking about some comic books, some news pieces, Mandalorian news, there's toy news, there's movie news, there's Bad Batch news, there's Halcyon news, there's a lot of news. Um, But before we get into the news and the comic books... Nicole. Hi. Jim. Hi. It's great to see you both. Hey, you too, my guy. Nicole, you have some cool news to share with us fellow nerds that I was excited about to learn this morning, and I think (laughs) everyone else that's a big nerd like us would be excited about. Yeah, I. so I have three-day-old ink, my friends. I got tattooed for the first time in, like, literally four years, um, which was awesome. And uh, listen... Anyone who is tattooed knows it hurts, bro. Like, it hurts. But, like, I think you forget immediately how much it hurts. So I'm still in pain. Um, It's just like, oh, yeah, that's a bitch, isn't it? Um, But, yeah, I got the Harley Quinn uh, diamonds on my wrist. Um, Probably, like, what, two and a half inches tall? Uh, No, I'd Um, say that's more like three or four it's it's like my palm basically yeah size um but i got i went with the style like super super simple that it's vertically two black diamonds and then um on the inside a red diamond so i went with the the very simple version um the red diamond was sitting like on a nerve and my pinky started twitching and then went numb. That's how you know it's like, yeah, this is happening. <laughs> like it's very real. Like yeah. very quick. When I got one of my chest tattoos done, he was shading with a really uh heavy needle and my mm-hmm. arm along my arm, he must have been on a nerve because my entire inner bicep on my right arm was just on fire. Oh, yeah. And I was, I was like, oh, this is great. <laughs> <laughs> and that lasted like almost four hours. <laughs> Jesus Christ. See, mine was 45 minutes and I was in and out. Like it was it was a quick one. Oh, yeah. Like, this one God. was the <laughs> worst. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, no, Jim. But, but I, That's how real that pain was. I fully believe that. It's like my God. It looks dope. It's just like, you know, it's in that phase where it's all crusty and like weird and it kind of still... The pain isn't from like the actual tattoo; it's from the healing, right? Hey, like, don't pick. Be sure to moisturize. God no! Thank, thank the good Lord for Luberderm. But we're starting to peel. <laughs> I can tell which like diamond he did first because that one just started to peel just now, and I'm like, all right, I'm waiting for the other two to start. Can um, I tell you? I love that on. for you. Thank you. It's uh, it's really it's something else. But it's like my mom saw it yesterday, and she was like. That's that's very that's there. I was like, yup, that's the point. You know of what? It. <laughs> I, now that I think about it, you and I were at a comic con. I don't know if this is the first one that we met and became friends at, or yeah. if this is one that we had already been at and buddies for. Mm. But didn't we? Wasn't there like a Harley Quinn? Dis- were you there when we saw Jim Lee drawing Harley Quinn? Yes. And they had yes. yeah, it was for Birds of Prey. Yeah, it was. And for, I remember yes. you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I remember you were losing your mind. We were in yes. that cool DC event, and yeah. they had like Harley's like bat and outfit and all the stuff. Her roller skates. I was crying. Yeah. I was like, this is the best day ever. They showed that was us really stuff from cool. the HBO show. They showed us like the Kite Man clip, and I lost my mind laughing so hard. It was so good. It was just That's like the best show. Harley Quinn event ever it, oh my god it made me so happy they spoiled us they were like here's food here's drinks harley quinn stuff and i was like this is phenomenal like it was just so emotional the whole time but yeah i've wanted this tattoo for like 15 years like this is the first tattoo i knew i wanted um it's very you thank you i i was like let's let's freaking go so but yeah, it was uh, related. I talked to my artist about a Star Wars idea I had, and I, against my better judgment, am going to tell you all about it 
because someone's going to steal it. And I don't like, fine, go ahead, do it, do it before I do. You know what? <laughs> go on. Here's the way to look at that. Someone will see it on you and they'll steal it regardless. That's very true. Um, so what I'm going to do is basically a skull and crossbones, but it's going to be the mudhorn skull, like a gnarly mudhorn Mandalorian skull. And then Ahsoka's lightsabers crossed behind it, and then Maul's going vertically through the back of it. So it's the Ahsoka really and Maul cool. fight, and then the Mandalorian skull. But like he was like so a skull and crossbones, and I was like yes, exactly. <laughs> but like Star Wars skull and crossbones, and um, he was very excited about that. And I was like, all right, well let me heal from this, and then figure out placement. And then, like, let's chat. But he was so amped. I was like, so am I, brother. Like, it's right right be- on the side of your face. Yes, absolutely. Just like. Sure, your mother not, wouldn't like- say anything. Yeah, right. Yeah. You know what you yeah. can do is shave under your hair on the back mm-hmm. of your neck. And yes, then yes, get yes. It, get it on the back of your head. No one will I could know. do that. I could do that. I have thought long and hard about, like, a neck, back of the neck tattoo where like my hair covers it 99% of the time and it's like no one will ever see it it's just there for me but i don't know whatever it's just i'm i'm amped like it was just it was so funny my mom was like don't show your dad i was like okay <laughs> fine it's like he's going to see it like i don't know what you want from me <laughs> like t-shirt weather's funny. coming it's i was a- like <laughs> this is it's not i can try like, I could try for a while, but, like, he's gonna see it. But she was like, wait till it's healed, and it's not as bright, and it's not as obvious. I was like, yeah, that's my plan. Like, it's gonna look better in, like, two weeks than it does right now. So, whatever. But, yeah, that's that's my, my life right now, is I'm dealing with fresh ink, you know, the washing the tattoo three times a day and putting a ton of Lubriderm on it. That's where we're at. And we're starting to peel. So the itchiness is coming. And uh, I have a scared feeling that I'm going to scratch it in my sleep. Because I do that. There's another uh, fun Sorry, little man. thing for Jim to edit out. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking Listen. of Jim, our resident producer and all around great guy, paleontologist, home renovator man that, that builds <laughs> stuff for his family. Had a birthday yesterday. So very happy birthday to Jim. Happy Yay. birthday, Jim. Happy name we, day and all that. I think. I don't know. They could have named me before or after. I, I don't know how it works. Yeah. Children are weird. You know. How was your this birthday, Jim? Um, did you do anything fun? We did the um, Beyond Van Gogh experience. Oh, cool. cool. I've been wondering how that is. It's interesting. So they have three rooms. The first room is basically a queue that you read various parts about his life and other like influences and stuff. And so we um, we went through that fairly slowly. They, they when we got there, they recommended like this will take an hour and a half to hour and 45 minutes. And my wife's like, you told me an hour when I bought the tickets, but OK. Um, but we it, it ended up taking about an hour. So you go through, read all the panels. The next room is called the waterfall room, which is basically projected images that kind of flow down the wall over the door and across the floor. And they said that's on a five minute loop. You can like stay there as long as you want. But then the final room, the third room is the, the main one that you see all the pictures of. And it's where they have a 30 minute on loop projection of various parts of his art kind of how his uh, process has changed over time and like the different types of art that he was doing through his life and it was like it was really cool i i, I rather enjoyed it um i think got a lot of a lot of cool imagery in there and i, I do like van gogh's style uh, i had taken quite a few art history classes i was an art major at one point and so um you wouldn't know it by looking at my art, but I was an art history major, <laughs> uh, or I was an art major, um, and so it's uh, it's cool. I, I really enjoyed it, and then we went out to a paleontologist's favorite dinner place, Dinosaur Barbecue. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah, that's a real thing by you. Yeah, yeah, it's a it's it was really good. I we had never actually been there. I um I went to college right around here where I live now and um, we'd never actually been to it. And so I'm like, why don't we go there? 
um, for my birthday and we uh, we couldn't get reservations, but they said they do walk in. So we ended up walking in and waiting like half an hour and sitting down. So it was fine. Um, and the food was phenomenal. We got family family style enough to feed four to six people for three of us. Um, so wow. we have a lot of leftovers. <laughs> Very good. That's the way nice. to do it. <clears throat> and I ended up taking out a wall or uh, taking out a door frame in my wall. Um, if you look on my Twitter, there's a video of me uh, removing one of the doors like the Kool-Aid man. Um, <laughs> that's dope. So that's um, a, that, that was my home improvement work this week was putting up uh, putting up a wall, a, the great wall, as I call it, because it's like 16 feet wide or so. Jesus. More than that, actually. Quick question for you guys. Wide. Speaking of Van Gogh. Go on. Are, are either of you Doctor Who fans? Yes. Mm-mm. This is the seen... best Doctor Who episode ever. Okay. Uh, yeah. Jim, even if you're not a Doctor Who fan, there is an episode, a couple of episodes involving Van Gogh, um, because Doctor Who travels through time, where uh, they hang out with Vincent Van Gogh, and there's one of those episodes, it's a short little jaunt of them, so I highly recommend it. There's one of those episodes that is like one of the best episodes of television I've seen. It is phenomenally good. The acting in it is unbelievable. Uh, and I'm kind of surprised more people don't talk about it. It's incredible. Like, when you still see Bill Nighy, like, just prepare to cry. That's that's the moment where everyone's like, I'm going to cry for 10 days now. Yeah, there's it's so many good so actors good. in that and those so episodes, good. too. Yeah, it's a real. I highly recommend that. It's so so good. And like like you said, even if you don't watch Doctor Who, like you don't need to look at this cat's face. <laughs> um, you don't need the context to just go into that 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 episode. It's so good. There was a cat guest star for uh, yes, anyone wondering what I was, that. I was so happy <laughs> that little face. I had to lock her out of our bedroom last night, so she was she's uh, jonesing for some attention this morning. Oh, sweetie pie. What's her name? Uh, Arya. Arya. That's okay. Yes. So she's my very wife much was, her namesake. Uh, <laughs> my, my wife was big into Doctor Who for a little while, and I sat down to watch one episode with her. I lasted probably about twenty minutes of me going, "What on earth is going on here?" Yeah, no, this just isn't for me. <laughs> it's very campy That's and fair. it definitely takes a little while to get into, yeah. but once you do, yeah. it's good. But again, regardless, these Van Gogh episodes, um, phenomenal. So oh, God. How are you, JJ? Uh, I'm good. Yeah, I am going to install our new smart lock today. Nice. I'm excited about that. I see Jim perking up a little bit as the home improvement guy. Hold on. I think I have. Yeah. Is this it is a key we code lock? Oh, wait. What is that? I've been. Oh, I know. <coughs> sure. Excuse me. Is that like, uh, so uh, is that like you lock. hold your phone up to it, sort of like? Uh... So it's really cool. You can do a you can do a bunch of types of authentication with it. They have a newer version, but the reason that I went with this one is because I read a lot of reviews that were not on the company's website, like on YouTube and stuff. Um, this one uses double A, and the newest version they managed to make it smaller but it uses some really weird batteries that i've never heard of that are way more expensive and last like less than half as long as the double a's last um so that's why i went with this one but it's cool because you can set up um a geofence with it and why i thought this would be useful besides like home security and knowing when my door is being unlocked is when my son arrives in the next three months and we're carrying a ton of stuff, you can set it up so once you're within a certain amount of feet to the door, it'll automatically unlock the door for you. So when we're, like, carrying him and the carriage and, you know, all of our stuff, we don't have to fumble with keys. The door will just already be unlocked for us. And on the reverse side of things, when you're leaving, you can set it to lock behind you after, like, X amount of seconds. So I thought that would be really cool. You can set up guest codes for people. You can you know, um, use it with home kit. I'm an Apple guy. I have, um, home kit set up with some other stuff in my house. So I did a lot of research and this seemed like the best one. That That's sounds cool. dope. We have, um, uh, password, uh, that, the type in that you t- type in the, the password. Yeah. Those are really can... popular too. Um, this one really attracted me because of the hands free. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think, um, I have keys. Yeah. Well, our biggest thing is that I replaced all of the locks on our house 
and there's like six doors on the house that we had to replace the locks on and as you can know locks are not cheap no um, they're not <laughs> and so i i went through a website where you can actually match all the keys and so you have one key for all six locks in the house that's very cool and then um you just have the the code on the front door which also has the same key as all the other locks that way i'm not like you don't have like a pile of keys f that you're never going to use because how many times do you go in the back door yeah. with like you don't need that yeah. key but if it's the same key as the front door then it it doesn't matter i need to do that with the other doors in the house there's a bunch of them that i don't know which key go like i have all the keys in a you know in a drawer but i uh, they're so old and the house has had a couple of things worked on in a small addition in one spot that i just need to like get them all uniform um yeah but enough smart locks one more thing before we start talking about Star Wars that I thought you guys might appreciate. As you know, I'm a big horror and board game fan. Yes. Um, so I was gifted this. Ooh. Ooh, very nice. For our listening audience, uh, this is the Alien Fate of the Nostromo board game. So I had seen this before and I was like, yeah, yeah, it's an alien board game. How good can it be? But then I played it at my friend's house coincidentally like... A month ago and it was awesome it's so much fun uh so my wife got it for me for my birthday so I, I think i'm gonna teach her how to play tonight very <laughs> good get get All that right. uh, get that couple time in now yeah <laughs> <laughs> you guys ready to talk some star wars always your tauntaun will freeze before you reach the first marker then i'll see you in hell. hello what have we here all right Jim, do you want to start us off with, um, we were talking about time machines earlier. I think there's some relevant news here to that. Great Scott. There it is. <laughs> I was wondering how his delivery would be. He didn't disappoint. Yeah, pretty <laughs> darn good. So Christopher Lloyd, um, for anybody who doesn't know, uh, was one of the star stars of the Back to the Future trilogy. He's been in a also, lot of other things. Uh, also, what is wrong with you if you don't know who Christopher Lloyd is? Well, mm -hmm. like by this point, I'm sure a lot of people have not actually seen the Back to the Future trilogy since it is an 80s series of movies, but it is in it's timeless. my top it's it timeless. is in my top three sets of movies ever. I absolutely love the Back to F the Future trilogy. And um he has been uh slated as joining the Mandalorian season three that they said is currently uh, filming right now. So um, that, that I am super duper excited about because he is kind of campy in the way he acts, but in the best way, like over oh, the he's top. The man. Um, yeah. So I, I'm super excited that he is like the joint. We don't know anything about his character. They said that it's likely to be a, um, kind of a guest starring spot, obviously not one of the main leads, but I'm assuming if he is a villain, that would be super awesome. He's getting up there now too. He's 83. Yeah. Wow. Um, yeah. He wasn't young for the Back to the Future trilogy in the 80s. <laughs> no. Um, I don't know if this is if this was just like a thing that they made as like a one-time little joke, but I saw that he did like a Rick and Morty live action trailer recently i don't know if that's gonna be did like he really yeah yeah it's really cool looking and awesome. uh i don't know if this was just like one of those things that they did as like a joke and that was that or if it's gonna turn into anything but i would it's also like to see that yeah but, oh that's so funny um well it's yeah, funny speaking. because he is like isn't he the archetype of for Rick and Morty, like yeah, Rick and Morty's supposed to be Back to the Future, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, I, I haven't mean, actually seen the show, but it is on my oh, to watch so list. Freaking funny, man! It's ridiculous. Oh my god! I mean, it's it the the fan base I question ninety nine percent of the time, but it is a genuinely funny piece of work. It is so good. I question the fan base on almost any property ever. Um, including Star Wars. <laughs> oh yeah, but Rick, Rick and Morty fans, as a Rick and Morty fan, they can be rabid. It is, it's intense. But the show, 
is so good. It is so good. So well done. It's a it's very so funny great. show. The ad lib parts, like the, when you could tell there was just no script and they're just like going for it. My favorite. My absolute favorite. Um, we do have some more Mandalorian uh, season three news that is a little bit of a spoiler. So maybe mute the podcast for a couple minutes here because we got a lot of news pieces to talk about. Um, so there was a, a leak, a very blurry picture leaked from the set, and it reveals someone that we'll be seeing in season three. I don't know if you guys saw this. Nope. All nope. right. Well, get ready. Here comes oh, a spoiler. God. So the things I do for this podcast. <laughs> so at the Go end on. of season two, we saw Bo Katan uh, and Cosca Reeves kicking ass um, with Ming Na Wen. Um, help me out. Din Charm. Fennec Shand. Uh, Fennec Shand. Thank you. For some reason, I couldn't think of her name. Uh, but notably, one of her companions. Um, Axe Woves was missing and we and that was never explained to us and um, Katie Sarkoff was asked about this uh, and she was just like oh yeah he was in the bathroom the whole time and kind of just like <laughs> brushed it off That's funny. Um, but Simon uh, Cassian Nidas I, I don't know if I said his last name right probably not but he was interviewed um, excuse me no uh, let's see who it was Oh, no, yes. He was interviewed, and he said there is a very specific reason he was not there. Uh, and in the photo that leaked, he is seen in his Mandalorian armor on set. So he's going to be back, which oh, good. logically tells us that we'll probably see Bo-Katan again as well, which, hell yeah, because both those characters were awesome. So who, um, so it was Bo-Katan, you said Cus. Casca Reeves is that the the female Casca Mandalorian? Reeves, uh, Casca Reeves is played by Sasha Banks, the professional. Sasha Banks, wrestler. okay, that's the that's her name. Um, yeah, she so... has said in interviews that she's not coming back for season she's three. Not? Oh no, um, I was hoping shame. she'd have more well, of a role. Yeah, I, I was gonna say. I mean, Obi, uh, Ewan McGregor lied about Star Wars to dozens of news outlets for years. So that's true. I was disappointed when I read this, and then I was like, wait a minute. She could just totally be lying. Like, what if they're like, yeah, hey, she could, she don't could tell like, people that you're coming back. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, yeah. that's pretty That's pretty common. So I was like, oh, ah. yeah. Yeah. She could yeah. be pulling an Andrew Garfield. Who exactly. just yells for months about how he's not in Spider-Man and that he's in Spider-Man. Yeah. Wait, what? So <laughs> I love Sasha Sorry. Banks. Sorry about that, my guy. <laughs> and I thought she was so good as Cosca Reeves. She and was. And I think it would be really weird if he came back and she didn't. So... I'm calling it right now. I think Sasha Banks is a liar. Well, maybe they were waiting in line. <laughs> he left the bathroom and she just went in to take use it yeah. after he he was done. Yeah. I don't know. All right. Uh, we got some toy news. This concerns you, Jim. Did you see this news? Uh, if it wasn't sent to me, then probably not. Uh, hmm. I just saw it this morning and I realized I forgot to send it to you. When I joined you initially before we started recording, I was barely awake. So sorry about this. Uh, there's a new Star Wars fan celebration exclusive that has been revealed. It is a Star Wars Republic Commando RC-1140. Uh, so this is from the Black Series. And let me give you guys a link so you can get it. feast your eyes on this guy. Yes, please. Because I have no idea what you're talking about. There you go. Oh, okay. Oh, no. He's Fixer. Mm-hmm. Fixer in Black Series. Yeah, so he's got um, the backpack, the um, commando-style helmet visor, and the commando-style um, blaster, and he's got the green paint on his white clone armor. I like the commando armor. They look so much more badass than regular clone troopers. It's saying... I guess it's not celebration. Like, it's weird. It says Star Wars fan celebration exclusive, but only still at that GameStop. So that is, I'm assuming they're not, they're saying fan celebration, but I don't think that's celebration. I think I th it is. So it's like how like New York Comic Con and San Diego Comic Con will have con exclusives, but yes. they're like at Barnes and Noble or Hot Topic or whatever. Exactly. Like they're not actually at 
the event, but they're for the event. They're like basically for people who can't go to the event but want to like celebrate the event. She nailed it. You're welcome. But it's just the wording is I've never heard it called fan celebration. That's what makes me question. Yeah, I think it's just exactly what Nicole said. It's just their way of of Differentiate announcing probably. things for people to buy that are associated with a big, important event to make them more likely to buy it. Well, if there's one thing that is not in short supply of at Celebration, it's exclusives. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, a small piece of news for the Obi-Wan Kenobi series. There's been a uh, location on Tatooine that has been mentioned since A New Hope that we've never actually seen in any Star Wars content. And we'll be seeing it in this series. Uh, and my guess is that this is where we see um, Owen Lars being confronted by one of the Inquisitors. And where some of the... Um, scenes from the trailer are uh going down jim as our resident lore nerd do you know which location i'm talking about on tatooine i don't anchorhead we've seen anchorhead we have oh wait no that was tashi station i think yeah, I isn't tashi say, station saw... at anchorhead i don't know but i know we saw tashi station in book of boba fett for the first time but yes um boba fett mentions anchorhead in the series and it's mentioned in a new hope but according to uh this news piece i'm reading we've never actually been to anchorhead and i think that's correct because i'm searching uh and i'm not finding anything that confirms we've been there i'm looking on wikipedia either way i, th I think that's a safe bet uh as to where the the scenes on tatooine are gonna be besides obi-wan's like hermit hut and uh the lars family ranch now, according to Wikipedia, its first appearance is in Book of Boba Fett. But I don't. Well, know. get ready for more of it. <laughs> That's why I feel like Tashi Station is at Anchorhead. I don't know because I feel like Tashi Station was just like a small bar in the middle of nowhere, and we saw nothing else around it. Um, according to Wikipedia, Tashi Station was the power station or repair shop on the outskirts of Anchorhead. Hmm. Did we actually see anything more in Anchorhead, though? Um, well, it's like one of those things like, have you been to New York? Yeah, I drove five miles over the, the city limits and I, I count that as being in New York. Um, <laughs> it's a, you're, if you're on the edge, I, I, I think people would count it. I, that's probably the only thing we've seen of it as the, the outs, outskirts. All right. Uh, Nicole, you had a news piece I, that I did. you mentioned this morning. Do you want to dig into that? Sure. So, According to the Hollywood Reporter, which take that as... Has well, never lied. Um, no, never. Um, but according to the Hollywood Reporter, they have a source that claims that Maul was originally supposed to be in the Obi-Wan Kenobi series. Ray Park was set to reprise his role. He might have done test footage. He might have been on set for rehearsals. This all might have happened. Um, and then he was cut in the rewrites. Um, however, there was a Lucasfilm representative who said that none of that is true. But it's a, like an unknown Lucasfilm source as well. So they are reporting both sides of this, which is so interesting <laughs> and a great way for the Hollywood Reporter to cover their butt um, by saying, hey, we have a source that says this. And then we have a source that says none of that is true. So who really knows? Um, but I also heard of this from someone on TikTok. So I do want to give them credit where credit is due. This creator's name is Mace A.H. Windu. He's great. He's phenomenal on TikTok. Um, I always say it as Mesa Windu as I like as I read the uh the his name that's how I remember it but uh yeah he's great and he made a great point he was like what would Maul be doing there what does he have to do with this story we have six episodes do we have time for him and would that take away from the confrontation in Rebels um if they met again in the series and uh he made some good points so i'm not mad either way obviously if i see my boy in this show i'm gonna freak out um but also i've been saying for a very long time 
if I never see Ray Park ever again, I'll be fine. Like, literally just put Sam Witwer in the makeup. Like, just do it. He's got the right face. Like, let's be honest. Um, it's it is what it is at this point. But who knows? Well, who knows? Well, we know. True, right? Well, we know that in the 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 show they mentioned. I saw the article too. They mentioned in the article. Um, but the show went under heavy rewrites. That's why it yes. got delayed because they rewrote the entire show because yeah. I believe. Uh, Ewan actually kind of prompted the rewrites because he wasn't a hundred percent on board with what they had, and Deborah Chow yeah. rewrote it. So it's entirely possible that the original script had Darth Maul, and then the rewrites have um, either less to no Maul at all. Uh, and you're right; I don't see a reason because if Maul is there, he will be the primary person. Right. Yeah, because, I, I don't think it makes any sense for him to be in this. No, I if don't. You have, I, I don't think so either. If you have somebody with that level of um, just just star power, I guess is uh, not the word I'm looking for, but it works here. Just yeah. importance to yeah. Star Wars, um, this time period of Star Wars, and has that important and uh, that powerful of a relationship and a story with Obi-Wan you would need to have the series be about them. But it doesn't make sense for it to be about them because they finished that out in Rebels, and it was done perfectly, in my opinion. Um, So I think we could certainly see something where someone's just like, oh, blah, 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 Crimson Sun, and there's like a nod to, like... um, Crimson Dawn? Crimson Dawn, excuse me. Um, It's all good. You know, because... He's in charge of, of that, and they could give some kind of just small one-liner Easter egg to him and Kira, um, but I think that's as far as it would go if it even happens. Uh, I'd be fine with that, but I honestly wouldn't want to see more than that because I, I think there's already so much going on in this from what we've seen that it would take <laughs> away from the Inquisitors, and I think that's mm-hmm. what's supposed to be our focus here besides yes. when you know Vader inevitably shows up. I... Yeah, I think it sounds like they didn't have Vader in the original script, and they had Maul instead. That's yeah. And then they replaced Maul with both Vader and the Inquisitors. So that it sounds like that's what might have happened, and I am fine with that choice. I think it's a good one. I think that they should have one shot of Maul, and it's on this other planet that they go to, Obi-Wan had already taken off in his starship. Maul can see him leaving, and he's just standing there with one tear going down his, his cheek. <laughs> I'd be fine with that. It's like, there goes my boyfriend. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so close, yet so far. Yet so far. But yeah, I don't know. I, I Listen, as the biggest Maul fan I know, um, I'm okay with this. All right, uh, we've got some Disney Park news uh, regarding the new Star Wars Galactic Star Cruiser Hotel. So this has been out for, what, like less than a month now? It opened to the public, to the public, to the public on public March less... 1st, I believe. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So, so three there... weeks, pretty much. Yeah, there... Um... There have been a lot of reviews. Um, You know, it was obviously booked out uh, for the first few months. Um, Most of them, from what I've seen, are positive. Um, The biggest complaint, obviously, being the cost. And a lot of um, folks were not stoked about that. But for the folks who went, most of the reviews are positive. But we've also seen that there have been a lot of cancellations. Uh, And... You know, I don't think that's unusual considering how ridiculously expensive uh, it is. And a, I think a also... Lot of, a lot of the cancellations were also after their first couple initial uh, releases of content that we all agreed were absolutely atrocious. It was before, like, the press preview in February. Yeah, well, well that's, yeah, that's what I was getting to, that... You know, when people saw the lightsaber lessons, I think if I had booked that for $5,000 or more, I would have been like, yeah, never mind. Um, But, 
you know, a lot of the press reviews came out, uh, and it looked super cool. And I'm sure it is super cool. It's it's not a theme park. It's a you know, you're staying in an interactive experience. So I think that's the other thing that like people need to understand what they're signing up for here. It's a LARPing you, experience. Yeah, yes. if you're not comfortable with with that, then you're probably not going to have fun, and that's okay. That's not for everyone. Um, but there have been uh, a couple of reports coming out that they're actually having um, significant trouble booking this. There, as of the writing of two articles that were published five days ago, that pretty much mirror each other. One's a Disney Parks blog cinema blend that does um a lot of stuff on uh movies and tv and streaming and disney park stuff and the other one is cbr they have both pulled um quotes from sf gate which i'm not familiar with um but it looks like disney's having a lot of trouble filling out bookings they have no bookings as of five days ago for august september october November or December, which is kind of crazy for an attraction that only has a hundred spots available when you have to book out things for like a ride, like a year plus in advance. Well, you can look at the availability calendar of the hotel. Unlike every other property on Disney, you can't book it online, which I think is still super weird. Um, you have to call their, their agents, but you can actually see their availability counter up, up, updated, I think they said daily. They have two, um, if you count the two dates uh, as one package, they have two uh, availabilities in June, and that's the first availability. And then once you go from there, half of July is available, and then from after that there is quite a bit available uh august is almost completely available which is obscene given that mm-hmm. august is a huge travel time it is the middle of summer um and then september uh some of the weekends start to get booked up in september um but that's about it so it, it is there is a lot open if you want to go obviously you kind of kind of have your pick starting in july and for between five and ten thousand dollars, you can go. <laughs> five and six. <laughs> and That's also, for two uh, people, man. If you want to bring a family, no, you're looking close. Six to is between, yeah, six for is. two for two people. It's it's under five grand. I'm just saying. I've yeah. looked for a family so, of four. It's pretty much ten thousand dollars. No, family of four was six. It's astronomically expensive, regardless. But uh, I don't understand this. You can't book online thing. Why do you guys think that is? No freaking idea. That's weird, right? Yeah, I don't. Uh, I don't have a reason. I for guess that. we would have to um, talk to someone who actually booked it if they. Oh, yeah. You know someone? I do. Um, she hasn't gone yet. So, but uh, it would be one of those questions: is like, do you have a conversation with the booking agent? Is the booking agent like letting you know specific details about the hotel? Um, so that people aren't going there to be disappointed, essentially, because they didn't get what they wanted, whereas the booking mm. agent specifically will lay out exactly some of the requirements and what you're allowed or not allowed to do sort of thing. Yeah, I think it is important. Like, from one of the best reviews I wrote, it it basically came down to this. If you're bringing children who are going to be comfortable uh, like feeling like they're in a real Star Wars experience, it'll be totally worth it. But if you're going for yourself and you're not comfortable letting go of being self-conscious and like totally hopping into this story, then you're wasting your money because that's the whole point. It's like yes. a role-playing interactive experience. And yeah, there's some fun games and stuff like defending the ship against uh, attack and like lightsaber training, but Really, you were there to feel like you're in a, a mini Star Wars story. Yeah, well, that's we had talked about it, and my daughter um, has a very low threshold for kind of um, getting very angry, and mm-hmm. this is something where if she doesn't get her way, we have the potential of a meltdown. And I'm like, I am not paying five thousand dollars to have a child screaming at me. And so we agreed my wife and I would go when we are able to, but child's not coming with us. <laughs> and yeah. they also, this um... is, th- oh, this ahead, is I'm my, sorry. my, sorry, JJ. Um, no, 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 I'm sorry. My, my thing is, I was going to say two things. 
compared to other uh, Disney hotels, th- the availability is really, really weird. Um, I know for a fact that there is a room type in Animal Kingdom Lodge that there's only 10 rooms like this in Animal Kingdom Lodge and they go in like less than half an hour. When they go up, they, they're they gone in like half an hour for as far out as you can book it, which is bananas. So like you would think if the, the demand was that high, you know what I mean? Like it, it, it it's weird that there's this amount of rooms available when there's only a hundred of them. So there's that compared to other, some other Disney parks. The thing keeping me away from it right now is uh, there's a lot of reports and this is going to come off away, but I'm going to, I'm going to clarify that if you're in a group that's like going through a room or whatever, some kind of experience, if there's a kid in the room, it's all about that kid. And I'm going to tell you right now, I'm not paying three grand between me and someone else to go there and, and, and have, and not be catered to. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> like, it's not, that's not what I'm there for. I so don't Nicole care. So Nicole is saying she care. wants to be that kid. What I'm saying is <laughs> I would like, and Disney's never going to do this ever because we've been saying this for a very long, like childless people like myself have been saying this for a very, very long time. I need a kid's free space. I need one, one kid's free space in Disney. One. Give me one. They won't give it to us. I want one kid's free sailing a year, quote unquote, sailing for the, the Star Cruiser a year. I would pay an upcharge for it. I would. I'm so. I love. I love my friends' kids. I love any. Uh, like I love that. But I. I just. I would just like one hour <laughs> where I'm not. I'm not dealing with that. Um. Quite frankly, and and they're never gonna give that to us. So I think that's that's one thing keeping people like me away from it, because a the, the experience is clearly there are some children that it's not ma- made for. It's just not. And Jim, I think you're being incredibly smart and, and intelligent in in that kind of a choice. And some people don't think that through, you know, and I have I have an insane amount of respect for every parent in the world. I really do. I, I I'm just not one. <laughs> so I need five minutes where where I don't have I don't have to hear a kid screaming in Disney World. I would like it. No, I, I get, get it. it. Do you know it. what I'm saying? No, like, just I mean, give me one place. My, my my wife and I went um to Disney for a week before we were married and before COVID. Um and we had a great time. Just two adults without kids. Um but there's, yeah. you know, there's definitely um it, it, there was no point where I was like my experience is being ruined by children, but that being said, there's definitely points where I'm like, oh, it'd be cool to have something here for adults only. Right. That's that's all I'm saying. Like, yeah. listen, obviously, the whole thing is made for families. And I love that. I love that it's a place where I, as a kid, made memories with my parents. And I love that that my friends get to do that with their kids. I think that's beautiful. And listen, I don't dislike kids. I'm not saying that. But just once in a while, I need a break. You know? <laughs> but... <laughs> just um, need a, a little baby break once in a while and it seems like the star cruiser does not have that as an option but i do i do want to uh bring up really quick that um disney has put out a new uh video it went out on the 11th it's like four minutes long and it's basically like a mini preview of like what you're getting uh mm-hmm. it's from inside the Halcyon and it's showing people doing the experience and there's a shot of because you know Ray and the First Order show up uh, there's a shot of the new lightsabers being activated and it yeah, is yeah. super cool if you go to this video I'm putting the link uh, and you go to uh, 335 you can see it happen and it looks really cool all right, it was uh, it's on YouTube. It was released by Star Wars, the official Star Wars channel. So it's uh, yeah. So if you want to find it, just go to the official Star Wars YouTube channel and dis- you can watch dispatches. What yeah, dispatches from the Halcyon. It's called the characters. Yeah, it's dope. I've seen that moment a few times through social media, but it is pretty freaking incredible. Looks real. It does, and then she puts it down. 
<laughs> she, 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 very obviously. Up, well, she has to pick very up the one that she can use to actually swing yeah, around. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they, that just that moment needs a little bit of massaging. As like, why is she doing that? Like, she just puts it down and picks a different one up. And because I'm like, if she I hits it. anything with it, it will crumple like a stack of spaghetti. Absolutely, a hundred percent. I just, you know, I get it. It's just that moment the it needs to it needs some story massaging, but. No, that's all she has to say. It's like, I can't use this lightsaber because it'll crumple like a stack of spaghetti. Hold on. I have this one. Hang on, I need my backup lightsaber that's not as dope. I already lit this one 10 minutes ago. You just didn't see it. Yeah, right. So she just needs to carry two lightsabers, Mm -hmm. have one already lit, light the other one, and then (laughs) conveniently drop it gently onto the floor on the side uh, when nobody's looking. Yeah. All right. So comics? Yeah, let's talk about some comics. We haven't talked about comics in a while. There are a lot of new comics out for Star Wars, as always, these days. Uh, But since we haven't talked about it in a while, we wanted to talk about some High Republic comics specifically. Uh, So we have two mini-series, mini-events for you. I wouldn't call them events, mini-series today. Uh... And one, uh, I was really excited to look at, and I think we should talk about what, that one first since it's only two issues. And this well, that's is what Star I Wars. think. I think we should do that one second because of how it ends. Okay, fine. Um, we'll start with uh, the other one, which is a five-issue uh, miniseries. So this is uh, by. You know him. You love him. He's one of our favorite Star Wars creators, uh, Daniel Jose Older is the writer uh and on the art he has david watcher drawing and giada uh marchisio coloring uh so this nicole and is... i had a conversation about the artist we're not positive it's pronounced watcher because the yeah, t the is t after is... the ch <laughs> so we're well, going... whatever Wachter, Wachter. They, they can email Wachter. in or tweet us and yell at us and correct us but yeah, that's go. what i'm going with for now um <laughs> so this is Star Wars the High, High Republic Trial of Trail? Uh, excuse me, Trail of Shadows. We did. We talked about that before too. <laughs> yeah. So this is a um, mini little detective series. It's like True Detective in Star Wars. Um, it ru- it runs essentially a little bit before and then parallel to the Fallen Star. So yes. if you had read The Fallen Star, this gives you a lot of information about what's happening with the other characters that we don't see in the book. Yeah, so as with most High Republic comics and books, at this point into the publishing initiative, um, it's going to assume that you have some familiarity with what's going on and honestly it would be weird if it didn't interact with other stories that were happening um because of how many characters they've introduced at this point so you certainly don't need to have read the other high republic stuff to enjoy the story or understand it because they're hunting down information on something but that having that context will make it 10 times easier for you to Mm -hmm. enjoy the story and follow along with the characters um So, yeah, this is uh, following... uh, Have we seen these characters before now? I don't think we have. The detectives? Uh, Yeah. I don't don't recall all of them. I I know a lot of the characters we have seen, but I don't... um, I think they may have been hinted at in previous comics, but not um, kind of focusing on their own series. Um, So, yeah, there's... Nicole, Jim, and Hi. Connor um, reviewed The Fallen Star. Do you guys want to g- give like a quick synopsis of what that's about to give context to what th- this story is in, uh, how it relates to that? Starlight Beacon gets blowed up. All right, yeah, yeah, I was just going to say. <laughs> that's the, a pretty the, good job. The Starlight Beacon goes boom, and then there are these really horrifying creatures on board that, that suck the life out of Jedi. That's about it. And also, everybody dies. That's the book. Like, just, it's intense. Yeah. So, so I loved it's it. <laughs> specifically the creatures that uh, 
that Loden Greystorm uh, basically got killed by, those are the creatures that are on Starlight. Those are the creatures that we see in this series that they're trying to figure out what are. They call them the Nameless in Fallen Star. In this series, we get an actual name for the creatures and we can see them ish. Uh, we see parts of them, like we see yeah. claws and hands. I believe, um, actually, in the next series that we're going to talk about, we do see them, um, full and, on. And they kind of give you the impression that what you might be seeing may not be how they actually look. It could be part of what they're projecting for you to mm-hmm. see to kind of cause you to fear them. Um, so yeah, this follows, uh, the human Jedi Master. Um, Emmerich Kaftor, and he's working with um, one of, uh, I believe, a private eye that's recommended by Chancellor Lena So. Uh, and this character's name is, uh, her name is Cian uh, Holt. So these two, you know, we have like a private eye from um, Coruscant working with a Jedi master. So two different styles, two different skill sets. Uh, and they're basically trying to figure out like they know the Nile are the ones responsible for blowing up starlight beacon, but these creatures that are, you know, taking out Jedi without any problem that the Jedi are seemingly like a hundred percent vulnerable to, uh, they need to figure out what they are and if they can defeat them. Otherwise every engagement, the Jedi go into with, the Nile, they're going to be at like a full disadvantage and seemingly easily uh, just run over. So uh, yeah, it's five issues. It started in October and it just concluded in February. Uh, what did you guys think? Generally, I liked the story. There were parts of it that had me going, huh, what? Um, Connor brought up we talked about this uh, this arc a little bit before or uh, during the the fallen star conversation, and kind of brought up uh, one of the most questionable aspects of the story right at the end. Um, but I, I liked the story. I thought it was uh, a cool detective story. Um, the artwork is kind of all over the place. Like some of the shots are like super awesome, and then other panels look like they were done by somebody completely different. And it's, yeah, I, it, it's, it's one of those, like you kind of like me and Nicole were talking before, well, well, um, before you had signed on JJ about how we didn't know if there was multiple artists. Cause that's how it felt. Yeah. Uh, I had the same opinion. Like there was a lot of shots where I was like, man, this looks awesome. Uh, like some of the shots of the nameless ones, some of the shots of like the Nile, uh, in their gear and of like the spider cruisers, um, they just looked phenomenal. And then there was other panels where I was just confused. It wasn't that the art was bad. It just, the style looked so drastically different and there wasn't another artist listed that I was very confused about, um, why it was drawn the way that it was. It's not that it was bad. Um, but overall, especially the shots of the Nile, I thought the artist did a pretty fantastic job. I really liked, uh, how Marky on Row and the Nile were drawn. Uh, I feel like that's where the artist like really excelled. Yeah, I, I, I said before, like you got you open the series with this panel of the you know crapified Loden, and as Newfound Glory once said, crapified. <laughs> He's a crepe, um, like crepe paper. You know what I mean? Um, well, I'm thinking like strawberry filled. No, 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 no. Like crepe paper, like, you know, paper mache, like that. <laughs> he's just like, he's gonna fall apart in any second. But um, you get that panel. And then as Newfound Glory once said, it's all downhill from here. Wow. Like it just, it, it doesn't get better than that. It just gets worse. Um, and I think that took me out of it. And I, this is the thing. I love as a person, Daniel Jose Older. Um, I don't always love his writing. And this is the strongest I think I've seen from him, Um, but it's still not outstanding. And I hate to say that because he's such a stand up dude. Um, But like I I, part of me is like, I feel like you could do better than this. Like, again, I hate to say like some of the character moments I feel like weren't necessary 
um like the other pri- like the private eye like having feelings for the Jedi master I'm like what does this do for the story though like anything does uh, it do literally anything well, and uh, I don't uh, know that it does and listen that's just me not liking a choice that's not bad I'm not saying it's bad I just didn't love that choice you know I I'm curious about that it didn't bother me I'm just wondering um, why, if that was his decision or if he was told that right. that should happen. Because correct, they have correct. that going on with um, Avar, Chris, and uh, uh, I forget his name. Another Jedi Master. Um, ooh, uh, 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 ooh. I keep wanting to say I'm Stellan, but it's sounds. not Stellan. It's not Stellan. It's the other one. L. Dark? Elzar, Elzar, yes. Mass. Elzar, yes. Who I got that. So I'm like, there's kind of already that like we're blatantly in love with each other, but we're waiting until we leave the order to like explore that. Um, so I'm kind of wondering why they're introducing that with uh, two brand new characters. Uh, but it yeah. didn't bother me. I was just like, huh, we kind of already got that, but whatever. Um, yeah, it's just it's that, and like sometimes the clarity of the story and what is happening, it's not quite there. Do you know what I mean? Like I, I yeah. shouldn't be sitting here going, "What's happening?" Like I, it's, it's just some delivery. I, I, is not clear all the time. I think that's part of the challenge with a mini series with five issues, and I think that's mm-hmm. part of the challenge when you're, um, having to tell a story kind of using like other stories, if that makes sense. Like mm-hmm. what happened in Starlight Beacon, um, I. I I'm not saying um, I fully disagree with you. Like there are yeah. definitely parts where I kind of had to like flip back and then flip forward just to make sure I, I understood what was going on. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I do think it's part of the challenge of like being in this big, like super connected story that they're telling across these books with, yeah. you know, comics and novels. Sure. It's also yeah. there like, because of that, you, there are some weird things going on. Like if you read this story, there's a part where a couple of the characters run by in a race. Well, that is tied to a- another series, the Star Wars Adventures series, which Daniel also writes, DJO, as I like to call him. Um, mm. uh, he also writes that. And so it's one of those, like, it, it seems weird. It does give, like, good placement of events of where everything is happening. But it's like to fully understand everything you need to read everything and not everybody is going to read everything. Like that's the, like, like one of those, like you need to make a novel or a comic series that is based on itself, not reliant on the other stuff. And that is not exactly what we're getting here. Um, I want to bring up a couple more things from the artist that I really enjoyed. And that was every time the nameless one made somebody hallucinate. Like, mm. and see the creepy, like, scary monsters. And uh, when, um, uh, geez, I'm already forgetting the Jedi's name. Emmerich saw, like, his, his like, kind of nursemaid as a child with, like, the huge yes. teeth and, like, the eye. Like, that panel was so cool. I loved that. Mm-hmm. Um, and as far as characters, I think my favorite character, I'm trying to find his name because um, I forget his name. The little um The Shadra fan? Yeah. What was his name? He's the doctor the the yeah, Nile the little, Doctor. Yeah, but What a little dick. He was so he was so good. <laughs> he was great. What is his name? Is it Kefar Branto? Is that him? No. What the heck is this guy's name? I have to find it. He was so good. He was such a little psychopath. <laughs> Absolutely. He was a maniac. I'm looking on w- Wikipedia right now. Sorry, I I, I want to make sure. Well, one like well while well, you're looking that up, one of the questionable things that kind of had ever like both me, Connor, and Nicole scratching our heads was why did buckets of blood need to get naked, or I guess down to his skivvies <laughs> yeah. um, to die. I he also was like, was like, how is this necessary? Like, yeah, it's like he one like, of those like take this. You can explain it in the story because he needed to turn in his cloak because it had something they needed to test. However, what? <laughs> yeah, it's just like he could have just like ripped a sleeve off and been like, here you go, like test this. 
Instead, he's like, here, have my entire clothes, like all the clothes. And now I'm going to go die naked. And again, we see another like really cool character maybe die off panel. Like, hello? It's buckets of blood. He doesn't get a death. He just gets he's to ride not off. Dead. And, you know what I mean? Like, he's, if he's not. He's DJO's I, like favorite yeah. character. He's not. That dead. is You'd true. Think, but like. That's the second time we've maybe had a death off screen slash off panel, off page. And it's like, did we need another one? We have Buryaga. Um, did we need to do that with Buckets of Blood? I don't know. I don't know that we did. Um, Something that I, I really enjoyed from this that I wish we had seen more of was when Emmerich and Cian, um showed up to their first crime scene together and mm. the like police or security whatever he was guy on duty was like this is what happened and they were actually and they were like actually no that's completely wrong and they each broke down the crime scene and like went over why he was wrong and what actually happened i i really liked that uh and i wish there was more moments like that in in the book yeah there were many batman moments like that where you were like "Uh uh-huh like actual detective work yeah yeah it was cool yeah, there were definitely highlights like that. Like it, it's it's pretty good. Yeah, I I really liked that part of his writing. Um, I cannot find this guy's name, and it's driving me insane. Everyone just calls him Broden. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't. He or Rat intru- Doctor. He definitely introduces himself at one point. Yeah. Like later on. Oh, in the series. Utter Sons. Is that what it is? Yeah, it's Utter Son. Utters. Let me see. But yeah, that guy was a complete nut job. He was my favorite character. He's so strange. And he had his family and like, um, oh, Kizma Utter Sound. Yeah, he was the like crazy doctor, and he got that like slice across his face, and he had like the stitches holding his head together, and he like went home, and then immediately left, was throwing thermal detonators at people and they were like why are you doing that man uh he killed nile he killed regular people he wanted to kill uh the jedi and the detective he just didn't care he was like i don't care who gets in my way i'm this tiny little doctor and i'm going to kill uh or stab in the back anyone who gets in my way oh yeah and he tortured people small (laughs) small maniac yeah yeah really big fan of him would love to see more of him he was cool. But speaking of maniacs. Wait, before you transition, I have a very important oh. question. I'm sorry. Go on. That was really good. I'm sorry. That was a really good transition. But this impor- this is an important question that I feel like if we had DJO back on the show and I asked him about it, he would do the thing that he did to me when I asked him about um, Darth uh, Crate and the, and the mask influence. Did you notice when they talked about the legend... Uh, and I'm asking you specifically, Jim, because you've read Jedi Fallen Order. I mean, um, New Jedi right. Order. Mm. Did you notice when they talked about the planet that the Nameless Ones were from, they said it was a living planet? Like, everything, including the planet, was alive? Mm. I wonder if that's a nod to Zonima uh, Sekut from uh, New Jedi Order, like, with the Yuzen Vong. Perhaps. I didn't notice that, but it's uh, definitely possible. Because you gonna... do have you do have beasts that are, if not force sensitive, they use the force. Just um, like using, using Vong, and yeah. they had that like you know. So I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna DM him and be like, "Hey man, I see you." <laughs> <laughs> do it. All speaking right. Speaking of maniacs. Yeah, sorry, Jim. Do it again, and we'll pretend like it was the first time we heard it. Speaking of maniacs, the Whoa. other comic wow, series good job. <laughs> is all about. Our favorite Nile, because it's one of the few Nile we know anything about, um, <laughs> Markeon Rowe, The Eye of the Storm, a two-issue miniseries that the reason I wanted to do it second is literally on the last page of the um, comic of the second issue says end of phase one. And so this is the very last thing to come out for phase one. I know they wrapped up Star Wars Adventures um, because they uh, switching over the license from IDW to Dark Horse anyway. Um, 
and all the other comic series is, have come to a conclusion for phase one. So seems like this is it uh, for progressing forward until we get to phase three. Yeah, they said uh, we're not going to see. I, I think it was in trail that they said uh, we're not going to see any more comics until the fall. Yeah, that's when the um, the next uh, the next phase comes out, but that's jumping back 150 years, so you're not even progressing forward in time from there. Quest to the Jedi is next with the the in the fall. So tell us more about this comic, Jim. So this is where we get a lot of our answers about Mark Yonro, where he came from, kind of his background. The entire first issue of the two-issue series is the background of his people and their planet, how um, basically the planet was entirely enraptured by storms. and Everon. The pe- yeah, the people tried to work with the storms, that didn't work out too well. So then they started to battle the storms. That seemed to be the way to go. And they would battle against everyone. And so you kept seeing like people, the, his species battling against other, um, the Everani battling against other species, then battling against other groups within their species, and then other people within their species until basically it came down to one on one. You are either the you are either the winner or you're the loser, and so that's uh, kind pretty, of where we get Marky on Rowe's attitude, uh, look on life from. Yeah, it's pretty sad. Just like he's been raised uh, to be like utterly ruthless and self serving mm-hmm. and cutthroat because his people uh, are almost extinct and are and went through like horrible disaster after horrible disaster uh until there was barely any left um and his like whole mindset and just like outlook in life has been shaped by like just tragedy and war and like his parents (laughs) just uh his i think his dad killed his mom or his grandmother in front of him and like yes yeah it's just uh you really start to understand that he is the way he is. Um, you understand why he is the way that he is and that it's not necessarily his fault. Well, you are always the, um, regardless of reasons behind, you are always the um, sole purpose of your own actions. True, but that it type of trauma can he's definitely... <laughs> he's, he's, yeah. he's set up for... Uh, some shenanigans really um yeah i mean the fault is not entirely off of his shoulders but it it explains a lot like oh this is why you are the way you are um but it's yeah this is this is a really interesting series i love the way it's constructed and composed in like the scenes like scene three the kill in which through the power of the past the nihil nihil have become much more than they were an eye closes and an eye opens like that setup is so dope like i love that very very much um i like the way it's broken down this art style is much more my speed um and to do so much with only two issues i think is really impressive um, yeah the second issue we get a lot more talking about the nameless um or Oh, I, I didn't say what they were actually called. We did, like I said, we did get a name for them. Um, oh, and, and this is from Charles Sewell. Yeah, the, yeah. the, the, the Shri Kare Kare, I think. Um, that's the name of the species. We do go to their planet and see Mark Yonro picking them up. And so I believe the animals that we see in this issue is actually what they're supposed to look like. Oh, you know what? I was wrong. This is where we see the planet, and they mention that everything, every part of it, from the stones to the skies, is alive. So I have yes. to get at uh, Charles Sewell about this. Um, yeah, not, not DJO. The very last page of the comic, you see a picture of Markion and the nameless species. I'm going to call it the nameless species because I'm not going to remember that other thing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but- in the it's first so issue, cool. as far as the art, I forgot the artist's name. 
Let me look it up here. Uh, Guillermo uh, Sana, the panel where his father has been attacked by someone we don't know who and is pretty much on the verge of death uh, and asks his son to help him and the symbol of the eyes behind him, his helmet's covered in blood and he's like, help me please. And Markion's just sitting there staring at him and his dad's like, just going to sit there and watch, huh? Good boy. Yeah. And he so dies. Good. We actually saw this scene in two other things previously. We saw who initially attacked his father, which I we believe did. was Pan. Oh. And then um, I think we saw that in the Tempest Runner audio drama. And then we had actually seen him kill his own father because the father wasn't dead yet. We saw that in uh, Rising Tide, Rising Storm. What I, the second book? I don't I remember that for some reason. That's definitely come up before. We have, yeah, like they have jumped back to this a few times. Uh, yeah, so it gives us a, a look at how the Nile got formulated, uh, formed. Excuse me, um, the original purpose behind them. Uh, why his father changed their purpose and then why he took it a step further and changed their purpose again and how he's pretty masterfully manipulated the Nile um, and how he got, as Jim said, uh, the Nameless Ones, whose name, actual name, I'm not going to try to pronounce at the moment. But I, I'm curious if they're going to explain more about um, the artifact that he's using to control them and like mm. where that originated from because there was like in the other series in trail we saw like the ruins with like some hieroglyphic stuff like talking about the legend of it but i don't think they've really explained how markian learned about those or like where they're from they so we initially see them when he's hunting them down in the rising storm but you're right we get it's vague at best like because when we see the end of the rising storm we're all confused of what is going on what killed load and grade storm was it an animal was it this thing that we thought he was searching for they do you're right they do kind of hint at a little more that there are two pieces to this thing but we don't know where it came from or anything like that actually that may be part of phase uh, two when we jump back in time we get more about this nameless especially since we're ending off on the nameless of phase one, I could see us jumping back in time um, to the nameless in the past. Uh, yeah. There's, there's a lot of like little things that are easily missed here. Um, but it, if you're a, a lore nerd and um, somebody with, with an eye for detail, there's a lot of cool things that you can pick up on here. Uh, and if you've read the legends books, uh, New Jedi Order, like me, and you have suspicions, you can help me ask uh, Troll Soul if uh, that's what this planet is in reference to. Uh, but we've talked for a while today, so we're going to get out of here and go do other things. Um, so we hope you enjoyed the show. Uh, we really enjoy doing it. If you did, uh, you can help us out really easily by just taking uh, a minute to uh, leave us a five-star review on iTunes and share it with your friends. If they like Star Wars, please introduce them to the show. Uh, if you want to take it a step further, you can do so through patreon.com slash AIPT comics. Uh, we have a couple of book clubs on there, including one for Star Wars uh, and just a great Discord community that you can come hang out in. You can also find us on Twitter at Talking Tauntauns and on AIPTcomics.com. So that's going to do it. We're going to get out of here. Thank you so much for listening, and we'll see you next time.